Okay, Munisa, thank you for you know coming to Japan for the you know NCC conference. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So first question, actually, everyone asked me to ask you <laughs> because uh, your presentations are awesome and also design of the slide was you know very artistic. You know, what what's the uh, did you make it yourself or you know let me yeah. know the story behind. You know, I I, I did a TED talk very many years ago, like 2009, where I kind of did something similar. And it worked really well, and, and so I thought for this talk I might, you know, try something along those lines, and then I just had fun with it, you know. Um, I think it came all right. So looked you, all right, yeah. You wrote it yourself. Yeah, I drew, yeah, drew, I drew it, it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I was uh, I was drawing it. Uh, some of the last pictures actually on the plane over here, or on the way here, and yeah. then in my hotel, <laughs> and when I was having, uh, and then I went to a bar when I arrived. Everything was closed, but there was this one cocktail bar, and I sat there and I drank beer, and I was I drawing. So finish, finish, you know, <laughs> finishing, finishing it up, yeah. At the bar. <laughs> so at the presentation, you know, I think you didn't have time to explain, you know, explain you about to your companies and mm -hmm. uh, your product. You know, I think uh, could you could you tell you know us you know uh, a little bit about the product and companies? Are you really? Yeah, happy to. Um, obviously, I can talk about that for hours, but uh, I'll try to make it short. Um, so Klang. We started back in 2013, and uh, my two co-founders were then leaving a company called CCP. Yeah. Uh, they did a game called EVE Online, and um, what we saw in EVE Online was something that we uh, believe is the future of gaming. Um, it's where basically all the players come together into a single world, yeah. which is um, very different from normal MMOs, MMOs like World of Warcraft, shard the users into thousands or tens of thousands of shards. Um, so the likelihood of if you run into somebody who's playing uh, World of Warcraft at the bar, for example, um, I keep using bars as, as references, <laughs> I drink too much. If you, if you run into another World of Warcraft player, the chances of you, you know, being able to meet in the game are quite slim, or like the, the chances that you live in the same world are quite slim. This is very different from, you know, social networks, like, you know, Twitter, for example, if you meet somebody you know, and they give you a Twitter handle, you know you're in the same Twitter, you're mm -hmm. not on some separate Twitter shard. Yeah. Um, and so, so EVE was like that, and what we saw there was these large ecosystems of players that were really creating these incredible, incredibly sophisticated corporations and stories that came out of that um, world. And EVE is one of the most hardcore games I think ever made, and so we thought, you know, if we could make this more accessible, you know, that could be something really big. Um, and so that was the idea behind starting to think about Seed, which is the game mm. that we're building. And we just started to think about it in a way like, you know, how could the multi-million player playground mm -hmm. really uh, work? Uh, because um, there's a lot of problems that come with trying to bring everybody into the same yeah. world. And, and if you see that in... Uh, in MMOs, when a lot of people gather, it's just it's just this chaotic mess, really, right? And so we thought, you know, how do we how do we untangle this 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 mess, and uh, what kind of game model would work? Um, and so it was really when we started to think about simulating uh, the avatar, mm -hmm. uh, because what we also wanted to to do was to you know, if you think about social networks, everybody's always online. There's no difference between you being online or offline, mm -hmm. but it didn't always used to be like that. Yeah. Uh, if you think about Amazon or IRQ, it's not so many years ago, you know, if you weren't sitting there with the thing open, you know, with your, with your uh, app or like Amazon client open on your desktop, like for me, I would just see a grayed out name. I couldn't send you a message. I couldn't open even a, a chat window with you. Um, and so imagine that's only, only a decade ago or so, right? Or a little more than that. But so it's only a very short time ago where where that was the way communication worked. And so then when we moved over to Web2, I guess, yeah. um, you know, and, and this, this asynchronicity started to become a big part of it. Mm. And, and now, you know, you don't think about who's online or offline. You can send me a message. Everybody's always there. That's not the same for games. Mm -hmm. Games, you know, you, um, when you leave a game, you disappear. Yeah. You know, and there's no, oh, that, none yeah. of you left. There's <laughs> nobody, yeah. Just like Amazon used to be, right? But we've seen the, the, the huge leap uh, communication has gone and, and, and into the social networks um, and all of that. So we, we believe that there's something that games have still yet to do there. And so if we could then simulate the characters 24-7, mm -hmm. 
that would start to hint at this world where everybody's always online and there's no difference whether you're on or offline. And so that's kind of what, what unlocked the whole concept of seed for us. Mm. And then we started to think, well, we could have multiple characters, like a family. And then, of course, uh, we looked at Sims and uh, uh, we recently actually just hired the uh, Isabel, who was uh, leading Sims 4, <laughs> so oh, she's, yeah? <laughs> uh, she's joined us now. Um, and what we're doing there is basically each player has a family of characters that live in the game 24-7. Mm. And so, you know, a community of, of let's say, a thousand people uh, can build a city together and it's always, you know, full of life and people walking on the street and we're yeah. simulating every single character around the clock continuously. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of what Seed is. And then it's on a, on a single shared planet. So everybody's in the same game. Mm -hmm. There's no, no uh, sharding. Um, and um, and then, so if you meet another Seed player at the bar, you know, you're going to be able to meet in the game. And mm -hmm. you're going to be able to talk about past events that happened in the game or where the game world is heading or, or where you live in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you should meet or if you should you know, play together someday. And, and, and that, I think, is a, is a big leap for, for games. And so that's what yeah. we're really working on here. Yeah. So how does uh, like uh, Web3 technologies and blockchains or digital assets fit into your games? Uh, Hilmar, who's the CEO of, of, of CCP that makes EVE, started mm -hmm. talking about blockchain and gaming very, very long ago. It's because the economy in EVE is, is really the backbone. And that's something that we always you know, saw as a, as a you know, kind of parallel to see that, that we would also have this very player-driven economy. So blockchain really just accelerates the ability to make that real. We mm -hmm. were first looking to do it similar to Second Life. Mm -hmm. uh, Second Life, you could wire money in, you could wire money out. Yeah. Uh, so very similar to what we're seeing in, in Web3. Do, do it by the crypto, right? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think we want to use crypto and, and, and like we want to explore all the, all the technology that's been made available now mm -hmm. uh, with Web3. And, and there's lots of opportunity there to explore. And we're really excited by that. And one thing that, that I still haven't seen yet, and this is something I spoke a little bit or touched on in my, in my talk, is mm -hmm. that I still haven't seen kind of games do this properly. Yeah. Um, because they, they have what's called like a power pyramid or, or, uh, where you know, all you do is to try to get more power. So mm -hmm. that, and, and then it's just this endless win, right? uh, race <laughs> to the bottom, basically. But what's different in, in a player-driven economy like you, like you see in EVE and, and in Seed is that those economies are circular. Mm. And so, you know, it's not really the game developer just selling you more breadcrumbs down mm -hmm. this endless path uh, where he just makes the path always longer mm -hmm. before you reach the end. Uh, but it's really the players trading inside the game. It's a real yeah. economy. So players are creating value and selling it to each other, working for one another. It's not just about selling virtual items. It's about selling labor, mm -hmm. contracts, like information. Everything is going to be uh, in, in this uh, uh, player-driven economy. And Web3 is a real, real strong enabler of that. And it mm. adds this sense of realism and value to that economy. Helps the emotional responsiveness of the game because, mm. uh, and that's all the games really are, are, you know, how do we create drama and emotions mm. and, you know, yeah. all of that. We as DJs, we want to create, you know, Web3 economies, you know, in Japan's uh, strong economy. Uh, but how does uh, Web3 or crypto Blockchain ecosystem in, in Berlin uh, looks like. Uh. Berlin has been quite the boiling pot for Web3 and, and crypto. Um, a lot of, but it's more been on the DeFi space, mm -hmm. uh, which, which uh, I know my co-founder has, has uh, Otter has uh, been very involved with those, those people. Um, crypto kids, as they're called. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are based in Berlin. Uh, a lot of them moved to Lisbon now. So Lisbon yeah. obviously um, has, has taken some of them over. But yeah, it's quite vibrant, I would say, in, in Berlin, um, for sure. Uh, but there's, it's still a very heated topic. There are people mm. on both sides of the, of the spectrum, and they're really, you know, yeah. fighting, fighting, you know. And uh, <laughs> I like to be in the middle a little bit, the diplomat. But, uh, you know, I am certainly leaning uh, towards, uh, you know, crypto and Web3. Um, I think, like, you know, if you are a game developer today and you're not taking those types of business models seriously, uh, you risk, you know, becoming irrelevant. So whether you're actually uh, in agreement or not, mm -hmm. uh, to stay relevant, to stay in business, you just have to now consider it. It's, yeah. not, it's not an option anymore. So uh, sure, you know, your principles may go against it, but then 
you know, you may be in trouble business-wise. Mm -hmm. I think the last three, you know, uh, you know, could you give the, our audience the, to the message? Last three? Yeah, I just think like, you know, we're playing with real value um, and, you know, people's hard-earned cash. And so I think it's really important that uh, if you are doing any kind of Web3 um, stuff or crypto stuff that you just tread carefully, safely, mm -hmm. and like, don't screw anybody over. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Um, so yeah, just, you know, any kind of screw up or scam, you know, puts a black spot on, on this future that we're all trying to build together. So yeah, just be responsible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.